Welcome to day 473 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DSOFI, and we actually have some more DSOFI news today that we'll get to in just a few minutes. But yesterday, GameStop, Brian, GameStop had a huge announcement when it comes to NFTs. Yeah, so GameStop, we, we knew it was coming. We knew they were going to launch an NFT marketplace. And they rolled out the beta version of the, of the NFT marketplace yesterday. And, and I got to say, it, it looks really nice. Uh, there's nothing really revolutionary about it. Uh, it's not too much different from what you're used to uh, on OpenSea or Rarible or Coinbase NFTs. Um, <clears throat> but you can link up your GameStop wallet as well as other crypto wallets. It is based on Ethereum. GameStop, of course, they launched their crypto wallet probably a couple months ago. So you can link that up to it. Uh, it's Ethereum-based. Um, even though nothing really stands out quite yet, I think there are going to be some things that will stand out, and that's their partnership with Immutable X. Uh, they have several Web3 games that are going to come to the marketplace. So I'm assuming you're going to be a buy and sell NFTs related to these Web3 games. Uh, and, and that could be big, especially since GameStop has connections within the video game space, of course. Um, Immutable X uh, games such as Illuvium, Gods Unchained, and Guild of Guardians, uh, they will have NFTs listed on the marketplace shortly. Uh, remember, this is beta and a lot can happen still. Uh, they do have a kind of co a cool 3D viewer of some of the NFTs, so you can kind of move it around with your mouse. Uh, I thought that was kind of neat. It was kind of actually... Not kind of, but it was actually what we're doing with NFTZ, except not quite as extensive as what we're doing with NFTZ uh, in that we're moving things to the metaverse. Yeah, not yet at least. And we don't know right. which direction GameStop might ultimately go. Immutable X, it's a, it's a layer two that's built on top of Ethereum, which allows you to mint NFTs. I think it's free of charge. Uh, of course, those NFTs aren't going to show on other marketplaces, at least not yet, like OpenSea. I don't think OpenSea is compatible with Immutable X yet. Yeah, but it's going to be interesting to see how things develop. And I, I think if it says anything, it's that the NFT space isn't going anywhere. You have big corporations investing heavily into the space. So they're here to stay. I think they're going to evolve. We're going to see a lot of really cool things within gaming, within 3D uh, and I'm excited to see how things evolve over the next couple of years. Yeah. So moving on, new DSO slash Dow Dow hiree, Erica Ishanis. She made a post yesterday saying that on this Thursday, which is in two days from now, Dow Dow is going to be holding a Twitter spaces with web with the Web3 community that's going to be transitioning into a Dow. So this Web3 community is called Boys Club. Uh, they are going to be creating a DAO on DAO DAO, it appears. And they already have a large following. They have 11,000 followers on Twitter. They ha already have this mission that's out there, a web fully built out website. They have plans for a DAO. So that DAO, from what I can read and what I can tell, will be created on DAO DAO. So that's a potential of 11,000 plus people, 11,000 plus people all being brought into Dow Dow. So well, obviously 11,000 aren't going to be brought into Dow Dow, but it's they're be going to be a reach out to 11,000 people. Uh, they have a strong following, a passionate following. I, I think this is definitely something that can help Dow Dow kind of push things forward. Yeah. So, so what is Boys Club? So according to their website and according to what I've learned through Erica, Boys Club's mission is to onboard 1 million women and non-binary individuals into this new economy, I guess the crypto economy. They're going to do this through IRL events, educational content, and by experimenting with projects and projects in their DAO. So it, it's going to be interesting to see what this DAO does. Uh, I think they're going to use it to help build some projects. Again, that Twitter space is taking place Thursday, two days from now, July 14th at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, there's a lot of details if you go to their website too. Uh, just just check out their Twitter account, Boys Club Crypto, and they link to all of those different websites and whatnot. How about the fact that Erica has been on for what a week and a half, and she's already established a pretty major partnership with the DAO? 
I think that kind of says a lot. I think we'll, we'll see more of these partnerships and these are like building blocks of, of Dow Dow. And when Dow Dow grows, Diso will grow. So great job, Erica, in doing this. And I'm sure there's many more to follow. For sure. So NFTZ held an AMA yesterday, Brian. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, anybody familiar with the Reddit terminology, AMA is ask me anything. So basically, we want to be open with the community. We want to answer your questions. If you have questions about anything, our roadmap, uh, how our business functions, how we are planning to go to market and, and grow things in the next several months and years, uh, feel free to ask. The, a the post is still open, so if you have a question, you can still go to the NFTZ account and ask a question, and we'll be sure to answer it. I, I just want to touch on a few of the questions that were asked, and Brutal uh, asked us if we are going to list Ethereum and Solana NFTs, and the answer to that is yes and yes. Uh, the plan right now is to focus right now on Ethereum first. We want to we want to bring Ethereum over to NFTZ as soon as possible uh, and allow for lazy and on-chain minting. So some people might be familiar with lazy minting, which uh, takes place, I believe, on Rarible. Uh, but we'll have on-chain minting as well. Lazy minting is you don't pay the gas fee until the NFT is actually sold. The, the, uh, the NFT isn't actually minted on-chain until it is sold, and then the gas fees are paid at that point in time. Yeah, so also... Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna allow for the viewing of Ethereum NFTs that reside on chain. So if you minted something on OpenSea, uh, on Rarible, on chain, uh, it will be present on NFTZ. And we're gonna do a lot of really cool things around this, and we're really excited about it. Uh, if you mint something on NFTZ on Ethereum, it will also show on OpenSea. So it's gonna just basically be like any other marketplace. And we're really excited about that. Solana is gonna come several weeks after Ethereum. We're gonna make sure we get Ethereum right. And then we'll bring Solana on if all goes as planned. Uh, and then we'll consider other chains, but we have a lot of other details in our roadmap that are really gonna make things interesting within that, within the, within the Ethereum and Solana spaces. Um, as for IPFS, uh, we got a question about that as well. And it's ready. It's ready on NFTZ now, but basically we're waiting until other nodes have applied the changes they've made to support it. So Diamond, uh, DSocial World, DSOFI, we're just waiting on them. Uh, we're not pressuring them because I don't feel that's really what we need to be doing right now. But uh, yeah, as soon as they're as soon as they have it up, uh, things are going to be moving IPFS wise. Yeah, and getting back to Ethereum and Solana NFTs. Our, our goal isn't necessarily to get get NFT collectors to come on to NFTZ in order to mint Ethereum NFTs because we realize that they're probably familiar with OpenSea, they're familiar with Rarible, familiar with their own custom market, own marketplaces that they're they have built their living on or built their uh, collections on. So basically, it'll be great if you come to NFTZ, you mint on NFTZ, and we can collect some of those some of the royalty fees for minted NFTs. That would be awesome. That's a goal of ours, but that's that's definitely not our only monetization method that we have in mind. We're not focusing mostly on the minting process when it comes to trying to bring money in. Uh, tr other transaction fees are going to be recouped through Web3 type actions, but we also have a whole other plan for promotional stuff that we plan on doing that I think is going to be the real revenue generator for NFTZ in the long run. Uh, the goal is to allow these communities and these users who already are established on OpenSea and other NFT platforms to utilize NFTZ for the for the blockchain, for the DSO blockchain, and for the on-chain interactions and for the tipping and all the benefits that DSO can offer without you having to do anything else. Your NFTs are already going to be on NFTZ if you minted a collection on OpenSea. And you're going to have the same features that people have currently for DSO NFTs. You're going to have the galleries and you're going to have a lot more that we're working on that I, that we really believe will encourage people who are minting on OpenSea to come over to NFTZ to use the social blockchain features. And stay tuned for that. Um, we're really excited for all of that. Yeah, we want to we want to onboard entire Ethereum communities, entire 
uh, NFT Ethereum communities. And we feel we can do that with what we have planned. It's going to take a little bit of time, but uh, we have a really solid plan that we're really excited about. And we'll, we'll begin revealing some of it in the, in the weeks and months ahead, but it's step, one step at a time. And uh, right now we're excited about where we're headed with Ethereum and Solana. And Brian says we have a really solid plan. It's solid in that we know the direction we're going in, but we're constantly adding new ideas into the mix. So things evolve and things will continue to evolve until we actually release the product. But look for Ethereum NFTs who come very, very soon to NFTZ. Yep. So what is all the drama about Meta Philosopher? Uh, you know, over the past, I guess, month, month and a half, Meta Philosopher, this account has been created on DSO and has been buying up a ton of NFTs, spending a ton of DSO, buying NFTs from OG NFT collections, and even some newer NFT collections. But yesterday in the last couple of days, there seems to be a little bit of drama surrounding Meta Philosopher. There's been a new account that was created, Meta or Metanon, M-E-T-A-N-O-N. -E I created, I think, a few days ago, which was funded, initially funded by Meta Philosopher. And this account, along with the Meta Philosopher account, have been making some interesting comments about some of the DSO OGs who have been here for, you know, over a year. <laughs> and I honestly don't know what to make of it. It's kind of like, I don't know if it's a good old trolling taking place or it's Meta Philosopher really being angry over certain comments that are being made or Meta Philosopher just feeling like, I don't know, like he f needs to say certain things. And I say, see, he, it could be a she, uh, it could be a it or a they too. They need to say certain things. I don't know. It, it, it's like, it's, it's kind of comical reading through some of the stuff that's been taking place. But Meta, Meta Non had some unkind words for PBMC DAO, which is run by Ryan Nelf and some other DSO OGs. We don't even know for sure if Met Anon is Meta Philosopher. It was funded by Meta Philosopher, and the account says it's an account of Meta Philosopher, but we don't know. There's no 100% verification. Meta Philosopher hasn't confirmed it. Um, Meta Philosopher also has been unfollowing a bunch of DSOG. I think the account has unfollowed about 30 accounts in the last two days, mostly OG accounts, some newer accounts. It could just be like one of those things where they're trying to build up their account and they're following and unfollowing. I don't know. I don't want to come to any conclusions. There was a post where Illuminati, a DSO OG, posted a meme saying, quote unquote, when you make a funny meme about Meta Philosopher, but then he unfollows you. So Illuminati, Chris was unfollowed by Meta Philosopher, made this post, this meme, and Meta Philosopher actually replied and said, that's a good one. Did you come up with that all by yourself? Keep poking, Illuminati. Let's see what happens. Another example was Big Mike R 35 made a post about PBMC being worth more than Bitcoin. Obviously joking and exaggerating. I do like PBMC. I like what they're doing. Uh, and, and Meta Philosopher replied and said, hey, Big Mike, are you pretty big? The reason I'm asking is because there are was a kid in my NH, everyone called Tiny Mike, but he was a giant. Uh, Meta Philosopher also has been banning accounts. It's banned Brutal, it's banned PMBC, PBMC, it banned RMCX, Lisa Jane, Mutant Cock Yacht Club, Spunk Art by Nelf, Bugs Free, DD Gem Club, Crypto Kitties, which was, I believe, purchased by PBMC, uh, Complexity, and What the Cock. They're all banned by Meta Philosopher. I don't know. I don't know what's what the going cock on. is happening. I don't know. So, Meta Philosopher might just be being Meta Philosopher, and maybe this is just the Meta Philosopher persona. Maybe it's just who Meta Philosopher is. I don't know, but maybe. I mean, this is a possibility too. I guess maybe Meta Philosopher is a multi-dimensional creature who only knows how to deeply think and philosophize and buy NFTs and troll DSO OGs. Perhaps, perhaps that's what it is. I have another, I have another I, theory. You want to I hear mean, does it really matter? Uh, you know, I think we're still having a great time on DSO. I think Meta Philosopher is still buying NFTs. Uh, they're flying off the shelves because of that account. Do you want to hear my uh, theory I, here? I kind of do. I want to know what you're thinking, Brian. So, 
like, what if meta philosophers actually shared by more than one person, like maybe two twin brothers and one twin really loves NFTs and the other twin really loves trolling and they figure, Hey, we're running an NFT. Don't mode. start these rumors That's... now. Sorry, come on. <laughs> totally joking. I'm totally not joking. Meta philosophers. You never know. I mean, it could be multiple people. It could be a team of people and maybe they're just having fun. They're trying to get attention. Who knows? I don't think it really matters. I think don't let drama get to you. Maybe it's maybe a DAO. Drama get maybe Meta Philosopher is a DAO and it's run by everybody in the DAO and everybody has a seed phrase and they can access the account and people are just doing whatever they want. They're buying random NFTs. They're making ridiculous trollish like comments. I don't know. Your guess is as good as ours. Brutal did want us to cover this topic, so we are. I'm sorry, Brutal, but Meta Philosopher may be a little bit more brutal than you yeah and like you said like who really cares ultimately it's just words it's just drama uh it might be actually funny in some respect it, it depends if you take it with take it at heart or if you kind of say hey this is just comical uh but either way honestly i don't really like meta philosopher because we put our we put our <laughs> first um clout punk up for auction for three thousand DSO. And Meta Philosopher did not buy it, so I'm kind of I'm kind of pissed off to be honest. How dare you not buy our three thousand DSO NFT? It's only twenty five thousand dollars. Come on, Meta Philosopher. Messed up. Anyhow, let's move on. Meta Philosopher, keep up the good work, bad work. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Yeah. So DSOFI has a new feature. Uh, you can now configure which feed to show and which to hide. Uh, in addition to your default feed. So this kind of allows you to keep your home screen better organized. Uh, it's, a, it's, a pretty, uh, it's a pretty useful change, new feature. Uh, check it out if you haven't already. They posted about it on, on DSO. Yeah, and Rabal at it yet again, continues to develop and iterate upon DSOFI. Keep up the good work. Uh, GD Virtual Galley is another individual uh, of course, Gabriel GDS, who has been building and building on DSO, building outside of DSO, building in the 3D virtual worlds. He announced that the House of DAOs, the DAO DAO virtual hub, is opening worldwide to users this week. And not only is it going to include DAO brands, DAOs, individuals, DSO users, etc., but it's going to keep, it's going to, contain other blockchains and platforms as well. So it's expanding behind, beyond just DSO and DAO DAO. Uh, I, I like this idea. I think it's great. Uh, if you visit the gallery, you're going to see some creations from William Laurent, uh, his desolators, uh, Mercury. Mercury's done some great stuff with NFTs as well, and several others. Uh, GDS said the goal with this virtual hub is to be used as a bride. I think he meant bridge as a bridge that will connect Web3, blockchain, NFTs, DAOs, and more with Web2 users for them to have a more efficient and better onboarding experience. And I, I think he is doing just that. And in other news with GDS, on July 29th, GDS is going to be doing work for NBA superstar LeBron James. He, we know he's, he's photogra photographed uh, LeBron in the past. He's doing work, and it appears as though it's going to include a 3D virtual experience that he's creating for the one and only LeBron James. And hey, he GDS, also... GDS, maybe you can get LeBron on Judiso. That would be big. GDS and LBJ, right? Yeah. And also Steph Curry. He's doing a virtual experience for NBA superstar Steph Curry. So I don't know. GDS is dominating. Yeah, I, I love, I mean, he's all over the place. Yesterday we talked about it. he's all over the place in a good way. And he's just, he's just rolling this technology out, showcasing his uh, 3D virtual experiences uh, with celebrities, with brands. He's just everywhere and doing everything. And you got to give the guy a lot of credit. Yeah. And finally, before we get to some of the top accounts, uh, Grace Base Me. So it's been unveiled, or I guess discovered, that there is a Grace Base Me imposter slash scammer on DSO using the account Grace DSO and Grace Base Me's avatar. So the real Grace Base Me is Grace Base Me. Uh, don't fall for Grace DSO. It's a fake account. Uh, beware of some scams that they could be pulling, some rug pulls. 
just stay away from Grace Diso. Just yeah, and I think as as Diso expands, uh, we're gonna see more of this. So just be careful. Uh, do some due diligence. Make sure you check things out and stay informed because there will be scammers looking to take advantage of some of the names of the OG users on Diso. Exactly. So. I want to quickly get to the top NFT bids over the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ. Uh, this is the number of bids, total number of bids in the last day. And number one is BitClout FR. Uh, somebody who's missing here, oddly enough, is Meta Philosopher. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, after BitClout FR is Rhubarb, Manic, 044 Peace, Spunk Art, Studio Richards, Michel Gulio, FP Fund, Business Sally Ran, and Lisa Jane. Uh, and the most viewed NFT from the last 24 hours is one from Prianacek. Uh, it's Mice Heads number six. It's currently owned by none other than Meta Philosopher. Interesting. It all comes back to Meta Philosopher. Yeah, it's like a, this whole storyline. Uh, so top diamond creators of the last 24 hours, thanks to Altum Base, uh, Mysterious Ladies, who we spoke about yesterday, doing some great things to help women on DSO, followed by Michelle Lord, who I made a post of yesterday about yesterday because she's so valuable to this community, such a great person, uh, followed by Quanti, uh, Rihan Ray, Spunk Art, Krasenstein Us, Brutal, Miami, Japan, Mashalin, and Rebecca Sophia. So congrats to all of them. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, great, great work. Great work on DSO. Uh, we might be living in a simulation created by a meta philosopher, but we should still be here tomorrow. So everybody, we'll talk to you tomorrow.